Former National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC Adams Oshomole, has blamed the People's Democratic Party for the ongoing fuel scarcity. And Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi represents hope for Nigeria's restoration, says former senior special assistant to Governor Yesenwike of River State, RIA, Seth Franklin. This is Post Politics. I am Mary Anako. Comrade Adams Oshomole, the former national chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, has said the inability of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to fix Nigeria's refineries during its 16-year reign is partly responsible for the ongoing fuel scarcity. Fuel scarcity resurfaced across Nigeria some weeks back, with some marketers adjusting the pump price. Oshomole, who is the deputy director general of the Tinubu Shetima Campaign Council, blamed the opposition party for its inconsistency on privatization of refineries. According to him, one of the major crises the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, faced was dealing with the crisis around premium motor spirit, known as petrol. He listed the successes of the APC administration led by President Muhammad Buhari since assumption of office in May 2015 to include the Petroleum Industry Act and attracting the right investment to the sector, including the refinery in Lagos owned by Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote. Now, for those who do not know, the PDP produced Nigeria's president from 1999 to 2015 when APC's Buhari won the presidential election to end the second term bid of Jonathan. Joining us to discuss this is Adebayo Adedosu. He is the Assistant Director Diaspora Mobilization and Allied Matters with the APC, PCC, and Oseaneni is also joining us, who is a member of the People's Democratic Party, and he's a party chieftain. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. And if I may just make a quick correction, I am the Assistant Director for, that is in your state, while at the national level, I am a member of the Stakeholders Relations Directorate. Okay. So don't let me claim what I'm not doing. Okay. Assistant Directorship is for your state. All right, great. Also, it's so good to have you join us. Always a pleasure. Great. I'm going to start with you. Um, so the claims that your former party chairman is making, he's said that the Petroleum Industry Act is one of the things that he would give a pass mark to President Buhari. Uh, for doing in terms of the petroleum industry but then you're also laying claim to a refinery that is being put up by africa's what, richest man dangote but then we have refineries that are moribund and then workers who are being paid every other year how does that how do we well uh, it's very very simple i'm glad uh the former chairman of apc and the former governor of edo state actually delve into that we cannot take away the years of wastage of, of PDP. There is no way we are going to forgive that. Because the thing with the average Nigerian is we always forget where we are coming from. There is no way we can forget where we are coming from. The years of wastages brought us to our knees as a nation. There was a time when refineries were being given out like a bazaar under the PDP government. And how many of the refineries were built? I happened to come into contact with some petroleum players in 2017-2018 who were trying to pretend to be interested in building the refineries for which they were awarded licenses for. But the only thing they wanted to do, they took the oil wells or the, uh, the oil wells that were attached to each license, they took it to the international oil black market to sell. And they wanted to deceive the government that they had partners who are going to work with them to build those refineries. Whereas they, only interested, they, only, they are only interested in the oil, oil wells. We cannot take that away. And let us also remember, under the rule of PDP from 1999 to 2015, millions of dollars were spent on turnaround maintenances. What, maintain, what were they able to maintain? Why was it so difficult? For them between 1999 and 2015 to have just one refinery. And this, somebody's now saying. But the same can is, be said under the Buhari administration. Millions and millions are being earmarked every other day 
to ref for for turnaround maintenance in this refineries. These same refineries that you're making reference to. Hold on. I, I mean, we're okay. having a conversation uh -huh. here. Yes, the same thing happened this year, if not a few months ago, where the federal government declared a certain amount of money in trillions to for turnaround maintenance of these same refineries that I started by telling you are not working, but then we have staff who are being paid every single day. So um, if you are pointing fingers... Don't, don't, let, don't let us, don't let, uh, Miriam, don't let us get it twisted, okay? The baseline is a government, a party was in power for 16 years, all right? Are you saying because it is now the Buari-led administration, those refineries should no longer be maintained when we have not added new ones? We have not added new ones. So exactly what we are advocating for is a total breakdown of those refineries. They still need to be maintained one way or the other. Re re remember, we are not producing, we are not refining all our petroleum products in Nigeria, but we are still refining. I don't know where people get that fact from that all, we are not refining at all. What is the hold, hold on. How let, let many, me... I, I, because I keep asking these questions and I don't get answers. How many barrels do we produce a day in those refineries that you say we're still refining? What's the what's the amount? Because we uh, th that is very good. Things. That is why you are a journalist. These are the facts that journalists should go after. But we have. We have. So what fact do you have? Information. What fact do you have? This country, have you engaged the DPR? Under this administration, we're yet to be able to tell how much. Hold on. How much these facts are there. Refine per day. The fa this fact because journalists are quick to throw things out there. To the understanding well, I'm telling minds. you that as we speak, there as is no speak, information. When, when did you make that effort? Have you been in touch with the DPR? Have you been in touch with NMPC? Have you? Because these facts are, are, are out there. So we should not say we go by what we see on social media or what some people bandy are, are around. I'm not talking about your station or, or you as a person, <laughs> but I'm talking in general. Nigerians, we know, are lazy to go after evidence and facts. They are lazy to research into things. And that is why when somebody, it's easy for somebody to just feed them with junk and they run to town with it. Okay. For as long Back as you don't get question. the facts. Back to my question. What you just accused the PDP of is happening under your administration. Now, don't forget, I'm going to let her say come in here because this is not between you and I. But um, the reason why Buhari wanted to come in was because he thought that Jonathan was doing a bad job. Now yeah, you can't come in. Yes, job. so you're here. And seven seven years and mm -hmm. seven months to yeah. you leaving the office, you're okay. still telling me about a problem that you told me you had a solution to. Does that not make you look like a joke? Okay, I think from all indication you are looking for a magician. You don't look at the processes of doing things. What how long does it take to build a new refinery? How long has Dangote been on this refinery that he's building? What's happening to the old refineries? The old refineries have to be maintained because we are still using them. Do you want us to pack them up just like AP, a PDP did that they sold some of our, of our national assets like Outscorn? Is They sold a Jaukuta. Is that the kind of life that we could just condemn it all because they are not functioning so well? Let us just sell them off for a pittance. No, we are not going to do that. For all it is worth, we still have people working there. They are still producing, they are still refining some, some oil. We will still maintain it until a time when we are able to get new refineries working and get them to produce at optimal level. I'll say, I, I want to bring you in here. Mm. He's making a very interesting case here uh, that th these refineries are still up and doing. But then I'm still yet to get these answers. I've asked this question over and over again. If we are saying that these refineries are working, we're putting in trillions of naira. Uh, for turnaround maintenance but then the oil that is refining um the percentage is pretty low then really what are we doing um marianne i was enjoying you allow your studio guest uh, hang himself um it, it's been it's been hilarious watching you um pull him deeper and deeper into a hole he can't dig himself out of um in the first place the buhari administration last year spent about 1.5 billion dollars um on turnaround maintenance on just the port Harcourt refinery it's hilarious when you hear an apc spokesperson come and ask you a journalist that you should get some more facts about the status of the refineries when and, and let me it's important i read this quote um we recognize that today none of our refineries is operating for the various obvious reasons that through the work of this committee you'll find out why they are not 
operating. We are not going to hide anything from you. The person I just quoted is the MD of NNPC, um, Kari. You know, so uh, it, it's it's funny how, you know, I can see your headline, Nigerians are too lazy to make any research when the NNPC has come out and it's public knowledge and public record from the NNPC that none of the refineries are working, even when they spent $1.5 billion just last year. So for anyone to come and talk about 16 years of PDP after they have been in power for eight years and are spending money on turnaround maintenance that has billions of dollars that hasn't resulted in production of one, one refined barrel of crude oil. It's ridiculous. Um, he mentioned uh, Dangote and he tried to take the the credit for that. Um, maybe my guest should do some some research if he isn't too lazy to do so. Dangote on build in 2013. Because no, 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 no. Let me just cut that short. I never claim credit for anything. I said, how long does it take to erect to build a refinery? Listen, so I don't listen, know listen. where you what, heard that I said things, I was claiming credit for things. that. And listen, I listen, am aware that you, fl you brother, flourish please, brother, in misinformation. Please, brother, don't bring that on this brother, program brother, today. Please, my brother, please. Uh, Marianne, one then of the you can continue. You to the APC is how unruly they are when you come up on this type of program that you challenge them. Dangote review. I take that very personal. That okay. is very outlandish and, <laughs> and uncouth of you. Okay, gentlemen, let's let's uh, let's address the issue. Outlandish. Let's uh, and let's I was address the issue. This kind of uh, behavior from you because you have a right, okay. behavior. Can we can we can we address the issues and not one another? Thank you, Ose. Quickly. Thank thank you, Marian. Dangote revealed in 2013 that he was going to build a refinery, and he has secured. I think he was at the time about three billion dollars so this wasn't a refinery started and, and launched by the buhari administration government is a continuum the pdp administration created the enabling environment and created enough confidence for dangote to build a refinery in nigeria and it's funny hearing anybody come up here and talk about um about our lack of of uh, process um i want to speak specifically about adam shumali and his comments he was my former state governor. I have, um, as much as is possible, tremendous respect for him. Um, but my party, my, my campaign has come out to state officially that um, he is an unstable character. And it goes back to what he said about, um, and I think they were specifically referencing his flip-flopping uh, when he would endorse one candidate and then the next next you turn around and cut, criticize that candidate and then come back in and endorse that candidate. But I want to specifically speak about fuel scarcity. Um, Oshomole was, in, in 2009, called for the privatization of the refineries. So it's funny to hear the APC spokesperson come out and say privatizing refineries is bad. Oshomole in 2011 was part of the PDP um, road shows. I don't know if you remember them, uh, Marianne. When we're going around with um, Ngozi Okonjo Owela and Sole Lamido uh, SLS at the time, the central bank governor. And even as far back as 2010, 2011, we're already warning Nigerians that the fuel subsidy program is unsustainable and would bankrupt this country. And I'm referencing Oshomole's participation in that process. He recognized that fact and he called for the privatization of, of the refineries. So for him to come, you know, um, almost more than a decade later to now start accusing um, my candidate, His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, of being somehow corrupt because he wants to privatize the refineries is, is beyond curious to me. Um, I, I'm happy to, to focus on the issues away from the comedy show that we witnessed just now. Um, Nigeria is bankrupt. Our first scarcity regime is predicted to cost to consume about 7 trillion naira next year last year i think we consumed more than a billion dollars again just on first subsidy in august this so a couple of months ago in august so we have a bankrupt economy economy already debt servicing is more than federal government revenues you know first first subsidy takes almost 50 percent of our budget deficit you know and my candidate is saying the way to go is to take away the subsidy and to privatize inefficient government um, institutions or establishments that are a drain on resources we do not currently have. That's our plan. It's a clear plan. It's a pragmatic plan. It's a sensible plan. 
Um, and and you know, it's funny to me when I hear your... your let, let, uh, me, let, me, let me come back to my guest in the as, studio. Uh, defending the indefensible. Let me come back to my guest in the studio. Let's talk about the issue of privatization and, of course, the, the same thing that we saw Governor El Rufai, President, Good, uh, President Buhari, and several other people occupy Nigeria for. It's the same thing that this government has finally realized that they need to do. We don't know if, as Nigerians, Nigerians have kicked against it. Some have said it's a welcome idea. But going back to what Osse said, President Buhari was one of those who kicked against uh, the so subsidy I situation. Just, just but, now, but now the APC is sitting on that issue of subsidy, even though the finance minister has come out to say that subsidy will end December of this year. But here we are dealing with the queues, the endless queues. Queues. I'm sure that you went through high, hell and high water to get fuel no, to come here. No, I didn't. Oh, oh, how did you get the fuel no, then? I just did not. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's the truth. Okay. Well, let me just quickly say something. Uh, it's rather funny and a bit loud for Ose to make those outlandish claims he wasn't making. If any government bankrupted Nigeria, we know who they are. We know who they are. Don't let us restrict it to oil and gas. We know who bankrupted Nigeria. Under the PDP-led administration, we know how much they were selling crude oil per barrel. Was that the will to save? What did they do with the money? as at that time. But it seems like Nigeria are so quick to forget. That's why I say there is a history, there is a pattern that we need to go back to. Something that lasted 16 years to destroy, you want to fix in a couple of years. Let APC spend that kind of 16 years with the foundation. Countries survive. What, what foundation hold are on, you making reference hold to? Hold on, hold on. You gave him enough time yeah, without, but, without but interjecting. Mm -hmm. okay? He was responding to you, not no, me. No, he was responding. He was taking it, your question back. So, without interjecting, foundations have to be made, have to be laid. A society thrives when there is a structure in place. But did the PDP led administration build any structure? How much did they realize from the sale of crude oil? Let's just limit it to the Jonathan administration. It was in 2013 that Okonjo won Nigeria of recession. In 2014, the same Okonjo Uyala made noise that it's not going to be easy for the next administration because there was no money. That's why the fact that we have oil windfall, the government of PDP was borrowing money to pay salaries. Let's look at one thing. The money that PDP borrowed, that they're saying APC is borrowing more money, well, do they have anything to show for it? Let us, ba let us balance things. Because you, can, you, need to compare Apple with, you need to compare Apple with Apple. PDP, is, APC is borrowing money, no doubt. No government survives without borrowing. Okay? Even the United States government is about the most indebted in the world. Okay? But what do you have to show? For the money you collect, APC has, some, it has a lot to show. It was under the same PDP administration that Donny Okupe said Nigeria could not afford new coaches. Uh, don't we have new coaches, new trains today, modern train stations? Don't we have new airports? Where is this money coming from? When you have a government that is so wasteful, a government that does not have the political will, to tackle situations to, to, and bring lasting solutions. Solutions, lasting solutions need building. They are not something that you throw up like a canopy. They don't go up like that. And that is where the APC government is different because the APC government is looking at the foundation, the foundation of the problem. Now, we are talking about the subsidy. I'll be honest with you. Nigerians cannot pay the actual cost of fuel. Nigerians cannot pay, except Ose. Uh, is it Ose or Ose? Wants to lie to himself. He lives abroad. He knows how much he pays at the pump per liter of fuel. When we bring that down, that we want to be paying the actual cost of fuel, Nigerians, Nigeria will go under. And I'm serious about this. So why did the in, APC come up with the idea no, of the Let, let me just explain to you. If you in know Canada that today, Nigerians cannot pay for in it, Canada why did you today, come up with the idea? Hold on. In Canada and today. And then change your mind halfway. No, 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 no. The, the, the subsidy will go, but you cannot take something away from a baby. 
without replacing it with something. Just like you want, you, you want to move people away from a market, where are you moving them to? So that is, that is the thing that people are not comprehending. Today, per liter fuel at the pump in Canada is $1.87. During COVID, it went up to $2. Diesel at the pump price in Canada today, in Ontario, Toronto to be precise, is $2.33. Today, as of, as of today, those are facts. Because every day, and I mean every day, the price you pay in the morning is not the price you're going to pay in the evening. The price you pay today is not the price you're going to pay tomorrow. But this government, the Nigerian government has been very kind to Nigerians. Whether Wari government or the PDP government, okay. they have been very kind to Nigerians to actually have the subsidy. Because the moment the subsidy, subsidy is removed, then we are left with market fluctuations. Okay, so the government has been kind to us. Very kind. And we've continuously had fuel scarcity. We've had to buy fuel at ridiculous amounts, and sometimes we can't even find it. Let me, let me take you back. Let's backtrack. Okay. Let's talk about the issue of oil theft. It's under your government. It's not under no, 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 my hold, government. Hold on, mm -hmm. hold on. Can, can I, 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 I ask my that. questions? Can Go I, ahead. Let's not be unruly. No, I, no, 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 no. Relax. Please. When I ask my question, then you can respond. There is, there's been an issue of oil theft. A vessel that leads all the way into the sea. We, there was a pipeline that lead, led it all the way into the sea. We've seen vessels that have come into this country um, unabated. They have come. They've taken oil out of this country in billions. And recently, one of those oil vessels was destroyed by the army. And when asked, the chief of army was saying that, you know, there was nothing to be investigated. That's one. As we speak, the NMPC has given us zero, zero monies into the coffers of the nation. As we speak, zero Naira. And you made mention of the fact that under the PDP administration, they were being wasteful. So there's all theft under a president who was the minister of petroleum. And everything that's happening under his watch seems to be going down the drain. But NMPC has continued to receive a facelift, yet we're unable to do anything, even as much as have some monies in the coffers of the federating account from the NMPC. Um, what's, what did you call it again? Waste stage. Help me understand that. Well, let me first say this. I think it is rather unfair to tag me trying to correct something as being unruly. You don't bring a guest on and try to... So you didn't let me finish? Uh, I just needed to add context to that by saying, don't be unruly. Uh, that's okay, actually, great. That's so actually, uh, uh, that's actually not a statement that is really good for a TV program. Okay. Please, let's get that clear. Well, when we are talking about oil tests, this started nine years ago, under whose government? Under whose watch? So because it happened then, so can no, we let now it now you are now? also now interrupting me. Yes. That's a rhetorical but question. I'm just putting question. to you. That's a rhetorical question. Okay. Okay. That I put to you on that whose watch. When you're talking about oil theft, it is a high networked thing. Mm -hmm. Now, who brought them in? Who allowed this oil theft to abate for so long? Or that brought that on that whose watch? It was on that PDP that it started. Why was it? that it lasted for so it endured for so long now the government has seen it the government is tackling it remember if not for part of the pid which is now the uh, pi which was pib before it's yeah. now pia because it's now an act yes okay under that the government of president Wari instituted some processes some things so from programs some projects that will monitor nigeria's oil in real time we didn't have anything like that before. i'm trying to remember it so now nigerian oil is being monitored that is why we are able to detect there is a drop somewhere when there's a dro drop we can detect it and that's why we're able to detect this leakage i won't i'll call it leakage test leakage because and when you now look at it you will understand that even the international community is complicit because we have multinationals who are players in the oil, in the, uh, in the oil industry. Are they going to tell you and I that they don't know when there is a drop? Are they going to tell you and I that... But you're supposed to be in control of your country. Why would the international... You are supposed to be in control of your country, but when the system was... Your borders are porous. Was you're saying trailers are taking, tankers are taking fuel 
or products out of the country and nobody sees them. I mean, that also makes us look like everybody who's at the border, the customs, the immigrations are complicit. So again, why, and who are, these, and who are, they? why are we pointing fingers at the international community when the problem is here, starting within? That's what I, I said. It is not something an ordinary man can engage in. The oil business is not for you and I. Okay. Okay. And the oil internet, oil, oil, oil companies, the international, multi, the multinationals, they are complicit. Okay. And for you to deal with issues like this, there are things you need to put in place before you cannot just pack. For you to tackle a, a, a problem, you need to understand the problem, and you need to know the source of the problem. The source of the problem, simple, started nine years ago under the watch of a different party. That being said, it took so long for it to be tackled, for it to be nipped in the bud. But he said earlier, government, government is a continuum. So the government of APC, unfortunately, now needs to bear the weight of a situation that a government, a different shouldn't government it? overlooked. Shouldn't it? I mean, wh why did you apply for the job if you did not do a research into the job that hold, you're going hold, to take Hold on? it. Hold, hold. Why did you apply for the job? I'm just okay. asking. Okay. Should you when, not bear the burden? When you apply for the job you are doing right now, are you telling... Oh, I did research. Oh, 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 I, I knew did. what I was coming Are you now saying... Oh, you can, can see it on the, the surface. You can see it on the surface. Okay? Oh, no, I but when you come, of course, more tasks will be added on to Definitely. you. Definitely. Oh, thank you. Should I that complain? Because... That, oh, I didn't know that this is. was what, what the job was going to give In your private corners, me. I'm sure you'll be like, wow. No, I don't. Of oh, I'm don't worry. To, don't I'm worry. here to work. I, I know. Of course, you have to say that. This is a job of serving Nigerians. And Nigerians do not want to hear excuses. APC government is serving Nigeria. APC government is serving Nigerian Nigerians better than any government has served Nigeria. We just want to we, we want to give the dog a bad name to hang it. Because this is an election time. So all is fear in warfare. But common sense will prevail for those who have that objectivity, who have that objective mind to scrape beyond the surface. But it is only John this mind that will try to cover up for the sins of their fathers. That will try to cover up for the lapses, lapses of their grandfathers and okay. uncles. Okay. So don't let don't, don't 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 let us sugarcoat it. All right, Osei, I'm going to come back to you quickly. Uh, both of you obviously have your in campaign mode. You have your candidates, and you're trying to make a case, even though President Buhari is not in this race anymore. But your candidate obviously was the vice president under the um, Obasanjo administration, and he's saying. This, this rot in the oil sector has started. It's the, the cabal has been built over the years. And that you are t your party and whoever you're putting out there to run for office again, of course, needs to bear the brunt of what has happened and also not play the ostrich in this particular regard. Um, Marianne, one of the reasons why I love coming on your show is that you, 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 give, you don't give any quarter. And I want to thank you for that. Um, and it's because of that, because of how brutal you are as a journalist, that I, I don't come here to play politics. Um, and I'll speak to facts. So, for instance, um, in 2014, when we were in power, Nigeria was importing about 48 million uh, liters of, of PMS. That was what we were consuming. Um, today, it's about 68 million. So, there's been a jump of almost, I think, 19 million, about 20 million liters. The custom, the controller general of customs has come on to, on, on to the National Assembly to say it's impossible for Nigerians to consume that amount of money, um, of PMS, that it's either not coming into the country because he isn't even seeing the volume being trucked out um, of the country because our fuel, since it's so heavily subsidized, is, you know, like gold in our neighboring countries, in, in Chad, in Niger, and all around. In, in Benin Republic. So he's saying it's not even a smuggling problem because the amount of, of tankers you need to truck out that excess 19 million liters um, per day doesn't exist. We don't have that capacity in the country. So clearly there is some high level fraud going on. Uh, Maria, you mentioned the fact that FAC, NNPC contributors to FAC have dream, uh, dwindled down to zero. Um, for Nigerians of my brother, I, I I'll explain what it is. It's not about high-level politics, and I'm not going to mention um, the few. I'll get to that. It simply is because Nigeria does what we do, what we call crude swaps. So basically what happens is our crude oil, we give it to nations, and in exchange, they give us 
uh, PMS. We are in this situation because somehow the geniuses in the APC have decided that the NMPC is the only body that should import fuel. Before we used to have independent marketers and importers. Right now, it's only the APC. It's only the federal government. It's only the NMPC. So they've almost doubled the amount of um, of fuel we consume, and in exchange for that, we are giving out um, we are giving out uh, crude. And the result is that, coupled with the fact that um, the NMPC reported that almost 700 million barrels, um, 7 million dollars, 700 million dollars is being stolen from our oil. You have, you, you, there's no money. We literally, are, we have a corrupt oil subsidy regime. We have high level oil, oil theft that they are allowing happen. Not one person to my, to my recollection, not one high level person has lost their job. No one high level person has been arrested or has been prosecuted or investigated. You know, and but, nobody but that, can, but that can but that But that can also be said of the last government, the Good Block Jonathan government. How many people were prosecuted under the Jonathan let's, let's, administration let's, let's assume, in terms let's, let's of, assume, author, very, because yeah. if we're saying that this is a high level, this is a high level, you know, cabal, that runs this industry and then we have a government just as i asked him um how come these same people were one way or the other not being caught um made to pay for the crimes if there be any um so why is the same so why could we a, not say a, the same about a, the jonathan administration i mean for what we're, be, we're accusing the apc of why wasn't that done under the jonathan administration so it's a it's a simple simple question let's pretend right for a second that the Johnson administration was as bad as the APC painted it out to be in 2014, 2015. And let's agree that Nigerians said they didn't want that level of corruption, of inefficiencies, of incompetence, and they voted for the APC in 2015. They have had two terms to turn around all the problems they promised they would fix. Two full terms, and everything has gotten worse. So it's 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 almost like je double jeopardy. You know, a referendum was held in 2015. Nigerian chose the APC. The APC cannot responsibly come on air today to say 16 years of anything. It, it's an irresponsible position, I think, to take. You know, and for anybody to come on air to say that Nigeria currently monitors. Uh, oil production. It's its patently false. All we're seeing is another um, consequence of policy reversals and flip-flops by the APC. The PDP administer, administered um, oil monitoring, oil surveillance and monitoring, oil pipeline monitoring contracts mm -hmm. to Tompolo and other security outfits in the Niger Delta. Buhari came on board and revoked all of them. Immediately, um, the contracts were Reawarded, it was Tom Polo and his band of merry men that started discovering all these illegal pipeline co um, connections. It wasn't because of a drop in oil production, because by your guest's own admission, this thing has been going on for years. So, why is he now also coming on to say that it just happened because of high tech surveillance that Buhari had installed? It didn't happen. It simply was we had an efficient oil pipeline monitoring system in place. Buhari came up and said it's corrupt and reversed it. And then nine years later, after we've lost billions of dollars, he's reinstalling it and he wants us to pat, us, pat him on the back. Okay. This government bankrupted this nation. They are as incompetent as they are corrupt. And I'm looking forward to 2023 when Nigerians will vote them out of office. Okay, quickly, because we're almost, in fact, we're out of time. You want to respond to Osei before yes, we wrap this up? Osei, you know, honesty, I think... You have been very untruthful to yourself. You have been smart by half. <laughs> because simply put, if any government is patently corrupt, it is the PDP. And you know that. You know what happened under your party. You know how contracts were inflated were not done. We know of ministers charged with responsibility of con constructing roads but diverting millions and billions of naira to private pockets to send their children abroad we know all these facts right don't we we are not sure our memories are not short so if you are talking about fraud being endemic it is pdp that is actually the house of fraud we know then i'm glad that you talked about pipeline monitoring that is one of the greatest fraud ever perpetrated by any government in nigeria because what this contrast simply meant was the powers of the of Nigerian Navy was taken away and given to individuals simply because 
You wanted political correctness because you wanted to patronize them. It is the work of the okay. Navy to actually manage the ICs of any country and to secure the water borders of a country. But PDP did that because they were, their people were the one behind the contract. So it's good that you actually shot yourself in the leg and your uncles and your people <laughs> who, who did that project. So please, and you also, and you also admitted that poor oil management was you know was really huge under the PDP I think, government. I think, I'm glad I, you did I that I think this yourself. is a conversation Thank that you. we have to have again and again, but unfortunately, gentlemen, time is up. I really wish we could... Um, talk about how solution we can bring about solutions as opposed to the blame game between the APC and the PDP. But Osea Neni is uh, a PDP I, I chief I, have, I, I think I should have a right of rebuttal. Well, um, we, we do no, not have I, time, Osea. We have to go. Quickly, we have to very, go. Very, I'm so sorry. Because I very, very also have to my guest has you. said. My guest has said that we have to go. Pipeline contracts to individuals is I'll corrupt. We have, we have to go. We have to go, gentlemen. I'm so sorry. To Tom Polo. Thank you very much. All right. Pleasure as always. Yeah. All right. Osaneni is a PDP chieftain, and Adebayo Adedosu is the uh, assistant director, right, of diaspora mobilization in Oyo, Oyo State. State. Yes, uh, and with the APC. member of the PCC stakeholders relationship. All right. Thank you so much for being here, gentlemen. We have to go. Uh, we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be assessing the Labour uh, Labour Party's capacity to win in 2023. Stay with us.